Legends of Guitar, Volume 1, and uh, I know that was my uh, catalyst that got me going, uh, that opened up the, the floodgates to the genre, and so you mentioned that was your... So my whole background with guitar is uh, 12 years old, got super into rock and roll, uh, I love ACDC, well, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. and that was sort of my gateway into guitar playing. My parents are both musicians. Um, but we had acoustic guitars around the house, and I was, you know, cool. I mean, drawing pictures of SGs and wanting an SG, so that's yeah. what I started out on as an SG. Same thing to as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, through that, I got really into kind of basic hard rock like that. I got really into punk rock, especially later on when I went to college, I got super into hardcore. And uh, the whole time, though, there was this sort of underlying current of instrumental guitar music. When I was a little kid, uh, my babysitter had the the uh, Hawaii Five O LP, oh, yeah. and I would make him play that song over and over again. And I had a roommate in college who had the Ventures Live on stage record, mm -hmm. and I would play it over and over and over again. So. I don't know what the connection was, but at some point I was sitting there rocking out to the same five chords, and I thought, I have to get better at this. Yeah. Um, so I went to the local record store, and wouldn't you know what they had? The Best of the Ventures, The Best of Dick Dale. I bought those two oh, records, words. yeah, and I started learning songs on them, and then that there was the guitar player Rhino Cop, which not that one, but there's so another, it's, yeah, the, the other Rhino Cop, which is basically the soundtrack to Pulp Fiction. You can tell he was just listening to that right. one cop over and over again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that guitar player surf record kind of opened my eyes to all these other bands. Uh, simultaneously with that, at Pasadena City College, they did these huge record swap meets. And um, my college girlfriend introduced me to it. And there was so much cool stuff, and there were guys like Skid Row who would be there selling old surf records. So I got introduced to a lot of other old stuff through that record swap meet, and uh, a lot of what was then current new stuff. You know, right. I'm talking 93, 94, somewhere in there. And so uh, I used to, every month I would go and buy records at that swap meet. And, and that was sort of the the genesis of going the other music i loved but i was sort of a, a just a home guitar player nice. all through college i was a guitar player didn't think i was good enough to be in a band and uh, the surf music was the thing where i went from just being a guy playing at home to i i have to put a band together nice yeah yeah uh, Dick Dale in the Ventures, that's just the magic combo right there. You know, I think it's all I knew, right. like name-wise. I just, those were the things I knew. I knew the Ventures, obviously, right. and then Dick Dale was like, well, he's the surf guitar guy, so. The king of surf. Yeah, so I just, that's what, in my, kind of my naive state, I went and got those. Right. And then, it was like the floodgates were open, and I'm sure within a month I had a pretty sizable collection of that stuff. Damn. And records to be had, too. You know, at thrift stores, and you can find venture records. Records and CDs, you know. CDs, yeah. Going to, going to uh, Tower Records, 
God rest its soul. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was Love my that, that was my Friday night deal if I couldn't sleep because they were open until midnight and I would just go and buy everything new that had come out. Yeah. And it was a period when CDs were still healthy and right. there was just tons of stuff. stuff coming in. Imports, the, yeah, a lot of stuff absolutely. from the UK coming in, a compilation. There, there was a guy named Elliot Kendall at the Pasadena City College in Swatney, who I still see around all the time, and he always had phenomenal stuff. Yeah. You know, like just uh, air checks from the 60s and stuff. Right. And, you know, so that was kind of, a, kind of the deal, you know. And it, uh, yeah, anyway, I let you get a word in. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah for me, with that, uh, The Legends of Guitar, Volume 1, um, uh, what stuck out for me was The Gypsy Surfer and Beyond by the Shantes. Yeah. And uh, from there, you know, I'm just thinking that sound, that splash, that sound yeah. um, was my that, that I, I gotta do this, you know, I gotta totally, do this. Totally. And uh, back then, naive, not knowing that it was a reader tank, but uh, all I had was the onboard on the twin. I think it's gotta be splashier than that. And yeah, then, yeah, it's kind of the story of the tank was just, ah, uh, yeah, and you know, it. it's funny because people get all court sniffy about reverb tanks, but when that was the issue, reverb tank came out because oh. you, you could not find an original to say no, no. at that point. Yeah, uh, Fender did a great thing. Getting that guy out. They said a great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for the not being a point to point, but circuit board driven, it was amazing. Yeah. Analog to. I always say, listen, if you're in your bedroom, you can hear the difference and stuff, but yeah. when you're on stage, mm -hmm. it, it irons it's out all, all the problems. It all sounds good. Right. Yeah, so just, that was it. As, um, as Johnny Rowan said, uh, all electric guitars sound the same if you turn them up loud enough. Past 12 <laughs> existed, that's right. But ACDC, man, that's cool too, uh, that you dug ACDC. I still take that too as well. I, I feel like that is probably evident in my rhythm guitar playing, and frankly in, in my very basic lead playing. Yeah, Malcolm. Yeah. There, there's a lot of Angus so, Young. Yeah. There's, there's probably a, a helping of Greg Hunt. Yeah. Some reason, you know, from, from the Fanks, which yeah, was yeah. A, a record that really hit home for me. I think, I don't know if you, if you own that LP, fill it uh, up and go, uh, I'll show it to you. Yeah, I mean, please. And, and seeing the sleeve, I was just like, like, it looked like an old record. It was really cool. I mean, it's, it's got great sound quality to it. It's recorded really well. Um, but yeah, you know, off of that comp, the ones that got me, and it's probably evident in the Gaskin ones, it was, uh, I think the gestures on that, right, comp, right. Well, and the then uh, I don't remember what Eddie and the Showman songs on there. It was probably Squad Car. Squad Car, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's those, written, those two songs were the ones where I went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were at the other speed, their energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Heartbeat. Uh, that's another track too. Uh, when I discovered you guys, thinking, wow. Um, who's the artist that did Heartbeat? The um, Avengers. The Avengers, yeah. Yep. Five, four. Six. Right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm betraying my <laughs> ignorance. No uh, worries, man. But yeah, that that's just uh, that's a really, that's a great record, and and it's really late in the scheme of things. Right. You know, it's, those those guys at that point are playing it for the love of that music. Right. It's not because it was what was a hit. Yeah. It, 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 I think they were probably what was trying, happening at the time. They were probably trying to get gigs, and other bands are doing Strawberry Alarm Clock and stuff right. like that. You know, the Ruiz stuff. Yeah, yeah, which I did. I like the side. Oh yeah, like Tony stuff just fantastic. Yeah, that period. Like being those guys trying to get gigs doing surf music. Right. And it seems like in the 60s, everybody was trying to follow a train of whatever was happening. Yeah. Let's just go for it. Let's go down that route and experiment and go with where the money's at, I guess, where the gigs are at. Yeah, but the music at that period, man, you look at the evolution from, right. let's just say 1960 to 1970, it's a huge amount of change. You know, take, a look, at, take a look at the evolution from Let's say ninety-two to two thousand. Right. Is, there's, there's not it, it, that it's, just exponential growth. And it seems like uh, a lot, of, a lot of artists were floundering. Yeah. You know, what, uh, what do we do? What's the next thing? Uh, but it's so true. It just seems that 
rock and roll goes in these uh, segments of 10 years and then there's nothing for the next decade and then there's the next great thing. Yeah. And I think Nirvana really might have been for, one of those that, culprits that might have. Well, it's for rock and That's really why I take 92 out. Right, right. I mean, 92, that, was, that opened the floodgates like uh, the Beatles did when it came to America. And, ah, yeah, that, that. My, my uh, college girlfriend was from Seattle and she introduced me to a lot of that stuff Kind of in the in the mid to late 80s. Yeah. Really broadened my, my musical awareness because she was super, super hip to what was going on. Going on yeah. the yeah. stuff yeah. that was she really did. Turn me on to Nirvana and Soundgarden and uh, um, but even prior to that, like the wipers oh, was yeah. a big one for me and that was one that she turned me on to. But she also turned me on to Red Cross and Faster Pussycat. Ooh. So it was, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like kind of all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moment in time that will never happen again as it ever did. So I'm always curious to what the next thing is going to be. Oh, sure. Um, but with Surf, it, it just continues, to, which is great, uh, with all the different generations picking it up and making it their own, which is really, really cool to see that, the, the love, the passion. Yeah, I was, I was talking to some guys about that today, and, and kind of my realization was, it's outsider music to a certain extent. It, yeah, know, yeah, it's, it it's, but I mean that in a real positive way. It's nice. sort of this tight-knit group of people who really love that sound, oh, right. you know, mm -hmm. in, in its various forms. Um, which is really evident because there are 30 bands in Southern California and there are 15 guys who are in all those bands. So, you know, <laughs> sharing the love, you know, band bands. Um, but yeah, in the United Kingdom too and beyond as well, there's a lot going on in Europe too with the surf uh, that blows me away to this day. It, as which well. is kind of cool because they, they have Very a strong nice. instrumental. Right kind of tradition, but it's not necessarily American surf music. No, you know, it's, it's, it's and, their way of uh, doing it with yeah. their uh, uh, cultural vibes, you know, their, their, their flavors of sure. the background that they're coming from and uh, adding it. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Have, have you seen uh, Ray Agamemnon? I have not. Oh, oh man. That's good. Good. They're really good. Just look them up on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. They're really good. Yeah. They, they did some some gigs here locally. Right. They were outstanding. Speaking of gigs, I'm glad everybody's being able to gig and go out yeah. for <laughs> Yeah, for now. Indeed, <laughs> um, uh, yes, that uh, in these uncertain times, I hope things will get better for the world well, in general. Know, I have good friends who are professional musicians, and it's definitely been better. It's good, it's good to hear. I don't know that it's pre-pandemic level, but, right. but it's, it's, it's a start. But guys are able to get out and hit the road and right. do gigs. Uh, so Garrett, so tell us, we got these amazing pieces back here. Uh, we have Garrett Phillison on this Bandmaster here. Well, I don't know. So the Bandmaster is the magic amp that was on uh, actually all of this stuff, except for the Haunting You Will Go Go, right. which was a blackface dual showman turned up really, really, really loud. Wow. Um, but yeah, this this is all over uh, Target Draculon and under it. Um, and it's pretty much was my main live amp too. And then uh, I used a champ a lot also, so, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that was pretty much it. Um, I don't, believe it or not, I do not have any gas in those guitars except for that Ventures 2. Ventures. Uh, do you still have that red sparkle? No, no, no. no. In that fact, I, uh, I took all the parts off of that and uh, there's a guy in South America who bought the body in the neck. Oh, wow. Me. So yeah, I think it was a beauty, man. It's not like great. It weighed a thousand pounds. It did. It's yeah, it was, a, it was a, a 90s era Moserite body. Uh, yes. uh, Either from Jonas Ridge or it was an Elliot body. That's a lot of the Elliot. Uh, it was just really heavy. It was heavy. It was, it was, it was, it was heavy. 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 It was yeah. heavy. 
It was lead, and, and those rights don't weigh very much, so I don't know what it was about that particular song. And then uh, the black one that, that Sam Halsey, uh, Halsey hers, so do you still have that? So that wasn't black, it was blue. It was blue. It was super dark blue. I do not have it anymore. I right. sold it to a guy uh, who worked at Yamaha Guitars. Okay. Um, and then I saw it for sale on eBay years later. If you ever see, uh, doesn't say the Ventures on it. If you see one of those, it's a really great looking body because I think it was an older body that got recycled. Recycled, yeah. But on the back, there's a chip about that big out of it where it's red sparkle underneath. So oh. I think what it was was a, a, a botched sparkle finish maybe right. from air show or something and it sat around for years and then they just Reuse with the old. Yeah, because the, the, the this, this gets really nerdy, but the right. contouring over the years with nose rights, they're really lush in the in the first like sixty four. Yeah, yeah. And they, the bodies get thinner, and the cars start getting less right. rounded. And so, so that's all whole body. That's all by hand, right? The, 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 they uh, use templates, right? Well, they, they, they use a right shaper hand. blade. Okay. Um, you know, basically like a giant router right. bit that they did the shape out of the contour. Yeah, the giant carp, they call it, right?